Allow me to introduce to you the artist Jen Arani, who is an artist and an illustrator and a graphic designer. During the day, she works as a graphic designer, but in the evenings or on the weekends, you probably will find her drawing and illustrating very small, beautiful, colorful, and detailed images that she sells. She uses very fine tip pen to add details and beautiful bright colored watercolor paints to add really life and beauty to her work of art. She is going to be our inspiration for today's work of art. Alright, we are going to get started on our Jen Arani inspired winterscapes. You are going to need your paper, pencil, and a sharpie marker for day one of your project. Jen Arani, as we have seen, has an amazing amount of illustrations that have beautiful winter scenes in them. And then they have a beautiful watercolors that are a part of that too. But today we're going to focus on the landscape drawing and we've learned about the different parts of our landscape. Our foreground, which near the bottom, our middle ground, and background. So we're going to be focusing on that today and some variety that you're going to put into your art. I have steps for deciding your Generani compositions. You're going to pick a shape for your drawing. Generally, Generani does a lot of different shapes. So you could pick a full page, like I have right here. I'm just indicating a rectangular space on my piece of paper. Or you could do a triangle or a circle. So I have the circle kind of template right here. You could use a plate for that. And then you'll need a ruler if you want to mark out your triangle for your design. So I'm already ready, going to pick my option. And then the next thing we need to indicate is our horizon line. And our foreground, middle ground, and background will be done by zigzag. So that is step two. So that's what I need to do right now. In your resource file, you have a lot of other pages for resources. So this is talking about how you can create your middle ground area. And then also we have background and how to draw out the mountains for your background. Then we'll get into our detailing. There are some detailed slides on, the, on objects you could put into your artwork as well. So I'm going to first start off with this one, talking about creating our middle ground first. We are going to need to do, it says, is to create a zigzag line, or create our horizon line, and then we're going to separate our um, background from where our sky meets the land. So I'm going to draw this in, and the other thing I want to note is this. Remember that beautiful background in watercolor. I want to leave space for that, but I also want to leave space for my detailing. So I decided on mine halfway. I would say at least halfway. You could even come down a little lower in your design if you wanted to. My line does not have to be perfectly straight. It represents something like heels. Now the next thing we need to do in our step, it says number two. We have to draw, after we draw our horizon line, we need to go in and make a zigzag line. This is going to go back and forth in your picture. And that's going to represent different heels in your picture. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to indicate some of these lines coming back and forth in my design. Okay, the next thing I want to start to do is add some trees or detailing to my foreground. I notice in this picture here some other um, things going on like the creek and there's also that resource file that you could put with tents or dome temps um, or older types of A-frames or it could be a cabin. You can put any of those things in here. You can see that there's also multiple objects and then the size of these things matter because we could have larger items in the foreground and smaller items in the background. Elements in the foreground closer up might be larger. So I have larger trees and smaller trees in the background. You can see that there's also could be a house sitting here about the right size for a tree. So kind of measure out your objects to make sure that they're going to 
look proportional to where they are with the other objects on your page. Alright, so I would go ahead and start indicating your larger objects that you're going to put into your foreground. I am going to start making my trees and I am just doing a rough sketch here. I'm going to do my detailing work with Sharpie. But this is just to get my placement and size for objects in the front a little bit larger. And as I move towards the back, objects are going to get much smaller. Um, proportionally as they move back into my background. So you guys pick the objects that you want to kind of draw and sketch in first right now. You can also use your resource file remember for some other things that you can look at for Generani inspired. Alright the next step that it says that we need to do is we need to make another type of zigzag line that's going to be indicating our uh, mountains on the top. So if you can follow the steps in your resource file for how you're going to create the contour which is the outside line of your mountain. And remember these are going to be irregular. There is no right or wrong way to do this and they should all look different. After you've done step one, then we're going to come in and we're going to do some triangular shapes that are going to indicate the peaks and the shadows for our mountain. Then we're going to move on after that to by creating any extra detailing in the face of our mountain and then some extra line work. Once this extra line work comes in, we are going to definitely see with our Sharpie marker how this is going to look like a three-dimensional mountain because we have indicated now shadowing for where the light is going to come and hit the face of our mountain. And then we're going to have areas for shadows, deep shadows for pockets where the light does not hit. Alright, after I've used all of my resource files and I have done all of my pencil lines indicating that space for my winter scene, I'm going to go over all of those lines with my Sharpie marker, put in that the extra line work for the value, and start to come in and create those trees into my foreground, middle ground, and background. Please go back and use any resource files that you wish to add any extra little detailing into your picture. I'm adding a creek in, and then I'm going to come in and put one of these tents that I found that is actually in my um, resource file, and I'm paying special attention not to make it too large. It should look like it goes with my trees. All right, check out some of these additional options on creating your foreground, middle ground, and background using Generani inspired illustrations to create your own imaginative winterscape.